Wi-Fi routers. Probably the one item on your list that when you were starting a smart home, like myself, forgot to think about. Today, that's what we're talking about. Wi-Fi routers and how important and vital they are to the growth and performance of your smart home. Today, we're going to be covering Wi-Fi routers and how important they are to the success and future growth of your smart home. Stay tuned till the end where I recommend two Wi-Fi routers that you should consider purchasing when starting your smart home. I wanted to take a step back and actually make a video around Wi-Fi routers. The reason why was I was talking about them in some of my other videos and realized that I'm all about bringing it back to the basics. And I didn't do that here. I realized that there was a piece of building your smart home that I had forgotten. And so I wanted to take a moment and help educate you a little bit more on growing your smart home. So this video actually might be one of the first ones you should be watching when building a smart home. And so I'm going to actually add it to the front of the playlist on the basics of a smart home. Surprisingly, this was one of the big pieces that I realized I didn't cover when we were planning out how to grow a smart home. I personally forgot and honestly just didn't know what different features I needed in a Wi-Fi router whenever I was starting to add devices to my smart home. What we're going to cover today are the key features when looking for a Wi-Fi router. I want to stress how important it is before you get too far into building your smart home, how important it is that you look at your Wi-Fi router and make sure it's capable of being able to grow a smart home. The other big piece to Wi-Fi routers is going to be your internet service provider, also known as your ISP. You need to make sure that your ISP is providing you with a large enough plan or data plan to be able to withstand some of the network usage that is going to happen inside your home. In most cases, it's really not a lot, but you're still going to be taking a larger draw on your bandwidth every single day. So I'd encourage that you review your ISP plan and maybe consider an upgrade if possible. I'm not gonna dive into all the different considerations there, but it's just something to think about whenever you're building out a smart home. I'm gonna be covering five different tips to be looking at whenever you're purchasing your next Wi-Fi router, or maybe considering an upgrade. I'm also gonna be throwing in a bonus tip. And then lastly, I'm gonna recommend two different Wi-Fi routers that you should look at when you're looking at making your next purchase. One of the biggest considerations when purchasing a new Wi-Fi router is the amount of devices that it can withstand. This could be considered the most important piece when purchasing a new Wi-Fi router. The Wi-Fi router that I originally used because I'm a big Apple person was their Apple Airport Extreme, like whatever it might've been called. What I didn't realize that it was only capable of 50 devices. 50 devices honestly sounds like a lot. But when you start thinking about all the different light switches, contact sensors, all the different voice assistants that you have, your phones, your computers, your tablets, it really does start to add up. Most Wi-Fi routers today are going to be able to withstand well over 200 devices. So you should be shooting for something north of that range. Most cases, they're going to say they support at least 200 devices. And if you see that, then you should be good to go. The next feature that you should be considering is the square footage coverage of your device. Now what this is, is this is just the overarching area that your device or your Wi-Fi router should be able to reach. Whenever I was purchasing my Wi-Fi router, I found one that was capable of over 3,000 square feet. Now my house is really only about 2,400 square feet. And it is a two story, so it's not like it's spread out over the area versus going up in square footage. But I still wanted to be able to have a wide enough range that even if I left my house and I was just outside it sitting on my back porch or my front porch or just an outside playing, that I'd be able to still utilize my Wi-Fi without it shutting off. So please keep in mind whenever you're purchasing that you don't want to just look at how big your home is, how far outside your home, do you still want to be able to connect to your Wi-Fi without disconnecting? A simple consideration that might be lower down on the list is the amount of ports on the back. 
The Wi-Fi router that I purchased only had three ports on the back, and I've used up all of those ports. There is a lot of things that end up needing to connect directly to my Wi-Fi router through a landline, and I didn't take that into consideration. There are other ways that you can work around this, but again, if you can avoid having to have this issue from the get-go and avoid having to spend more money on additional hubs to connect to the Wi-Fi router, it makes everybody's life easier. So just keep that in mind. This is a hard one. And again, it's lower down on the totem pole when it comes to the consideration. If the Wi-Fi router you can get only comes with three additional ports, then that just might be what it is. And keep in mind, you can always buy a hub that will allow you to daisy chain devices together if you need to landline them in. The fourth feature to consider is the mesh network style. We used to use the term bridge, where we would bridge two Wi-Fi routers together, but that was again only two. Now we have the capability to connect multiple. You might even see some Wi-Fi routers that sell you two or three Wi-Fi routers all in one package together because they're expecting you to place them throughout your home to be able to create that mesh network style. The great thing about this is that it creates an interconnectivity so that your device, whether it be your phone, your tablet, or any of your smart home devices, are connected to the closest Wi-Fi router that is outputting the strongest signal. The last feature to consider, and I personally think this is one of the most important ones, is the single, dual, or tri-band capability of your Wi-Fi router, capability of your Wi-Fi router. Now, single band Wi-Fi routers are generally the most inexpensive. And personally, if you're going through a smart home route, you're gonna need to spend a little bit of extra money. And I'd personally stay away from single band Wi-Fi routers altogether. What dual band Wi-Fi routers are, this gives us the 2.4 and five gigahertz radio signal being admitted from our Wi-Fi router. Now, what these are, are two different frequencies that talk to our smart devices. Every device will connect to either the 2.4 or the five gigahertz network. Now, some have the ability to connect to both and most smart devices actually go with the lower frequency at 2.4 gigahertz. A lot of our bigger devices like Xboxes, computers, smartphones, tablets, those devices generally go on the five gigahertz network. So the reason why we want to look at a dual band is so we have the ability to connect to both and they do not cross interfere with each other. We are going to spend a little bit of money by going that dual band route, but it is more beneficial. The next step up from that is going to be our tri band. And you would think that it adds another gigahertz, but it really doesn't. All it is is 2.4 gigahertz band and two five gigahertz bands. So again, it prevents the interference of devices. And essentially you can actually assign specific bands to specific devices to reduce the interference that those devices have. I'm gonna keep the conversation about the 2.4 and the five gigahertz fairly simple because for the average user, it really doesn't matter what exactly they are, but more what matters is which devices are connecting to which. As I mentioned, most of our smart home devices, like our light switches, our contact sensors, our doorbells, our cameras, those are connecting to the 2.4 gigahertz network. If they need more bandwidth, they're generally gonna go with the five gigahertz. Being able to have two different types of signals emitted from our Wi-Fi router and preventing cross interference between our high bandwidth devices and our low bandwidth devices allows for faster connection and connectivity and response from all of our smart home devices. Hey everyone, real quick, I just wanted to ask that if you're enjoying this video, give me a thumbs up, or if you wanna learn more about smart homes, go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below. Thank you so much again for watching. Now let's get back to the video. Now let's quickly recap what the five tips are when looking for a new Wi-Fi router. And I'm gonna actually rank these on things you should be considering first and what you should be considering last when purchasing your new Wi-Fi router. Now, number one, we're probably gonna have to put this at the top, is gonna be the dual band capability. You must purchase one that is at least a dual band, if not a tri-band. That tri-band is going to get a little bit more expensive, so I would encourage you to go no lower than a dual band Wi-Fi router. The second feature, and this one comes in close second. There's two that are gonna be really close together. 
is going to be devices. Because again, if it can't withstand the sheer number of devices that are going to end up on your network, then you can't utilize it and your smart home is not going to work. It's going to be constantly kicking devices off left and right. So number two is going to be the device count. Number three, which also comes in almost second here, was the square footage coverage. Again, if that Wi-Fi router is not capable of covering your entire home in your network, then it's just not going to work. You're going to have some devices that are just going to be out of reach of your Wi-Fi router, and it's not going to work for you. The number four feature is going to be the mesh capability. Again, this is not a make or break on this, but if you have the ability to eventually add additional Wi-Fi routers into the network to create a mesh capability, then it's going to work long-term for you a lot better. You're going to have a stronger signal throughout your house and a better user experience. Then lastly, as I already mentioned earlier, ports on the back is going to be the last item you're looking at. It's just more so something to consider versus something to actually be focusing on purchasing. So again, rolling them back down, we're going to be looking at dual band capability, device count, square footage coverage, mesh capability, and lastly, ports on the back. Now there's one other bonus tip that I wanted to throw at you for something that you should look at and just keep in mind when purchasing. I didn't realize how important this feature was to me until I had kids. Now my kids are still young. They're one and three years old, so they're nowhere near using devices quite yet. It's something I wanted to future-proof my house for. I knew that one day this was going to be a concern, so I figured we'd tackle this now. The Wi-Fi router I purchased was the Griffin model or the Griffin brand. But what's really cool and what they pride themselves on is their parental controls. Their parental controls give us the ability to outright block certain websites and features based on age restriction. I can literally say that the device being used or a specific device being used is only being used by somebody under the age of 18 or even like 12 and it's gonna automatically restrict certain content to that device. The other capabilities it gives us is the ability to see internet search history, it gives us the ability to flag that device in certain ways, or we can even lock it down for certain amounts of time so that it cannot access the internet. Now this does come with a paid subscription to be able to utilize these features. When I first bought the Wi-Fi router, it gave me one year free, I didn't really need to utilize them at the time, but I did play with the features and found that I really, really enjoyed them. It is something that I will eventually pick the subscription back up when I need to utilize it a little bit more. Right now, it's only my wife and I that use most of the devices in our house. So there's really not a need for me to be able to restrict them. But what is great is that anybody that ever accesses my Wi-Fi network has certain content that's always blocked in our household. I'll leave it to you to decide if you feel like that's something that's necessary in your home. But personally for me, I feel like it's the right job as a parent to be able to restrict my child and honestly restrict other people from coming into my home and accessing certain types of content. There's a whole slew of different features that have been built into this Wi-Fi router and what it's capable of doing. And I've been showing them a little bit as I've been talking here. Some of my favorite things is being able to label every single device that hits the network and being able to categorize it as to what it is and where it goes. I can claim specific devices that are mine or my wife's or even ones that are kind of the communal devices in the home. As I mentioned, everybody's going to have their own personal feelings about how this should be functioning or if they are as a parent, they should have these types of controls. I just wanted to be able to give that option because my goal here is to be able to educate everyone about what their options are so that you can make the best and most informed decision for you in your home. This mostly came as speaking from one parent to another. And some of us, and a lot of you might not be parents, so you have no reason to care about these types of features, but there are still quite a few different options in there that are very nice to have in there. Before we dive into my recommended Wi-Fi routers, there is one thing I didn't cover when purchasing a Wi-Fi router. And that's the speed. Surprisingly, I don't think it matters that much. Most Wi-Fi routers are capable of well over gigabit speeds. And in my home, I've done a lot of streaming. I've done a lot of downloads. I'm a big gamer. I've really never found a time that I need to be able to push that high amount of speed. Really what that's capable of doing is giving you 
bandwidth to be able to utilize that speed in. So we're just gonna go with an example, one gigabyte. So if you have a big wide one gigabyte highway you're talking about, and you utilize 250 gigabits of the, or meg, megabits, whoa, megabits of those speed, you still have 750 to go. And it doesn't exactly work like this, but this gives you an idea that the more room you have on your highway, the easier it is to get multiple things operating or running down that road at the same time. So again, most devices or most Wi-Fi routers are gonna be capable of massive gigabit speeds. And personally, I don't think it's as important for the smart home scenario, but your overall home network needs might find that you need that. And again, most Wi-Fi routers, and the two I'm gonna recommend are capable of multi-gigabit speeds. So you're already gonna have that packed into all of the other features that we've discussed here today. Now, what two devices would I recommend? I've already mentioned one, which is Griffin. I use the Griffin Tower and I absolutely love it. I only have one in my home right now, covers about 3000 square feet and is capable of about 200 devices. The price was really what's appealing to me. They're roughly around the $200 mark. You can get them on sale and get them for less, or they even sell their smaller compact versions of them that can have that mesh capability. All of them have the mesh capability, but they're the smaller form factor for a lower price, lower square footage, that type of thing. But I went with one, so it was a one time and it covered my entire home. I am considering in the future purchasing another one and putting it on the downstairs opposite end of my house so I create a better network throughout my home so I have a better experience. Like I mentioned, I struggle sometimes when I'm on the opposite side of my home, but I love them. I love the parental controls. I love the device maximum. And again, the price is what I really love about these. Now, the other device that I would consider recommending is Netgear's Orbi. You can purchase these at Costco or you can get them directly from Netgear. They're a little bit more on the spendy side, but keep in mind, you're getting three Wi-Fi routers all in one box for you. They're gonna cover more square footage. It's the same devices and everything. You're just spending a little bit more money. Overall, most of these Wi-Fi routers are going to be about the same. A lot of times there's just one or two additional features that are going to come inside of them that will make them more appealing over another. Again, Griffin has that parental capability built in. That is actually one of their big marketing features is those parental capabilities that I absolutely love. Some of these other devices have similar capabilities, but again, Griffin really pushes that one. I know I'm leaning a little bit more towards the Griffin. It's again, the one I use. I've just read a lot of great reviews. I've done some research on Orbeez. Go check it out. I'm gonna link everything down below as to which ones you can purchase or just where you can find them so you can do a little bit more research on your own. Thanks so much for stopping by again. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video and are enjoying this content, please make sure you hit that subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up. It helps so much. Drop me a comment down below as to what you think and go check out some of the other videos I have on building out your smart home. We hope to see you here in the next one. Again, thank you and bye-bye.